everybody, Invisible Katana here doing my spoiler discussion for Ghost in the Shell. I just did my spoiler free review, so if you guys want to check that out, uh, there's a link in the description for that. You can watch that, then go see the movie, and then if you're interested, you can come back here and we go through all things spoilers. Although the first thing I would like to talk about is the controversy that surrounded this film from day one. It was a crap storm for this, and it was just crazy how many people were so upset with this. It's flopping. Um, in the box office, that's like the big thing. A lot of people are happy that it's flopping and all that stuff. Uh, for me personally, if you care to know what I actually think about this whole controversy, um, it, I definitely think this has 100% merit, if I'm being totally honest, uh, compared to like, you know, the Iron Fist thing. That I think is a totally separate argument than being mad that Iron Fist was the white guy because they didn't actually like change that character. Um, so that I thought was a totally different argument than this, where they totally did. And at first, when I went to see the film, and there's some things that they do early on where I was like, oh, maybe this isn't the character like I thought. Because people mention that they don't ever say uh, Matoko's name in the trailers and stuff. They just say Major. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I just assume, you know, kind of like what people mention, they just call her Major because it's obviously a white woman playing Matoko Kusanagi. And then when the movie started and they started going through some stuff. And at first they do show this girl on a stretch. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that's an Asian girl. So after that, I was like, I'll just assume I was wrong on that part. And then it goes to Scarlett Johansson. And then they have it where she has a totally different name. And I was like, okay, this isn't even the character. And I was like, this is something that they probably should have said a long time ago. Like, hey, we're doing the story, but because it's, you know, the Hollywood, you know, U.S. version, it's going to be Scarlett Johansson. And we even changed it to represent that. And I was like, that's not bad. They probably should have mentioned that because that's at least something. There's something to that. You know, they still change the main character from being Japanese to white. I was like, at least there's something to that and it's not the same Japanese person. And then that big twist in the middle of the movie came and I was like, mm, that was a bad, bad move because we go from this character who has an actual uh, full name, I think it was like Mirin, or Mira like Killian or something like that. And I just thought, totally different person. We understand that she was on a boat coming into the country. It was destroyed by a terrorist. That's why it is you know, this person who, you know, could have been any race technically, but it makes sense. They possibly saved a young girl that was white and then they gave her a different white body. But then that twist comes along and we find out, you know, her identity was taken and it's completely fake. And it is the major from the actual series and that she was Japanese. And I was like, man, who in the world thought that that was a good idea? Like that is just that, I don't know how that got off the ground as the big reveal and I, I mentioned this in my spoiler-free review, even when I saw the film, I was like, that's going to get torn apart by the few people that already hated it, but were giving it a chance. That's going to be a breaking point. Like, there are very few people, I think, for me personally, where it was like, I do wish they changed it. The main reason I saw this is because I love the anime. Like, I don't typically do the whole boycott thing. I want to see the freaking anime. I had to see it. I wanted to see what was going to happen. Plus, I review stuff, so it would kind of be stupid of me not to see it. Um, even though I'm not going to get money off of this, so maybe it wouldn't have made a difference, but going into it and seeing that part, I was just like, man, this is that thing, and that, um, it made me think of Iron Fist, where it was like, you know, that, like I said, different, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like that's totally different than this, but that had all the controversy of the white actor and everything like that, and then there are just parts in there where random things happen, it was really funny watching it in Iron Fist, and it's just like, oh, that's going to be nitpicked because of controversy and stuff like that, and it was really funny watching it. And of course, I saw it later on Twitter where people mentioned the specific the scenes that I saw, and that's what happened when that twist rolled around, and it was like, oh, this really is her, and she was an actual Japanese girl who was turned into a white girl, and I was like, that's just, I don't know where they thought that was going to go. And of course, I get home, and just check on Twitter, and of course, that's one of the first things I see where they talk about... It's, yeah, and a lot of people making the joke that it's like, get out, uh, too, which is really funny. But I was like, that's just dumb. Like, they either, just, like, that just really makes it stand out a lot more. And like I said, personally speaking, um, you know, I won't say I was, like, totally fine with it. This is one of those really rare circumstances where I was slightly okay just because of the fact that I thought Scarlett Johansson looked so much like the character. And it would be different if we already had a live-action version, so there is that element to it where it's like, and it's the first live action version of this. It's not like the, the uh, Death Note thing. For that, I don't mind because there's been three Death Note movies in live action and they all have the Asian characters. So I'm like, I, I mean, personally speaking, with it being the US version, 
Sure, he's usually a U.S. actor, but I heard some really weird stuff about that too, so I'm like, I don't even know where they're going with that. But this, I was like, okay, the actress looks, I actually, I personally feel, I thought she looked a lot like the character. And then even the creator came out and said that he never thought it would be an actual Japanese person playing the character. So once he said that, I was like, oh, well, it doesn't matter what I think, because this dude, he's the one who made it. So I was like, all controversy is like out the window for me. He's the one who made it, and that's just the way it is. So it's like, I don't care. But for me personally, I was like, kind of on the same boat, like I said, I personally wish that they just chose a uh, Japanese-American, you know, actor that could have done it, and then just, you know, let it be, because it, it's very simple to do that. Um, but I, I understand, it's Hollywood, and they don't, they want money, even though they really screwed up on some of the elements, like, they never give adaptations, I think, and this is someone who's seen live-action anime done, I think we've all seen the crappy Dragon Ball Z movie, but video games and anime, Hollywood doesn't really care about that. It's just like, get the famous person that we know and Scarlett Johansson's Marvel and she's like the female action lead at this point. So they're like, well, let's just use her. They didn't really give it any sort of credit to just get, even if it was a lesser known actress, who cares, it's Ghost in the Shell. Like that's, honestly, that's all they needed. It was like, it's Ghost in the Shell, people will see it. And then they chose, let's get the super big star because that'll make people see it. And that's what made people not see it. So, yeah, that's great. That's my whole thought process on that. I wanted to just talk about it a bit because, of course, it's a big part of the film. Uh, whether you care or not, I just wanted to talk about it to kind of get my thoughts out there. Because I don't really, I didn't really talk about it. Even when I did my first trailer reaction to it, I was like, I just don't care. I just want to see what the trailer's like. And it looks sweet. And seeing the movie looks really good. But like I said, though, for people that were going to see it who already you know, had their issues with it. I was like, this is not going to help with the fact that we find out she really is the major. And I don't know, it, for some reason it made it worse. I was like, this is going to make the controversy worse because it wasn't like from the very beginning. It was like the epic reveal was like, surprise, she was Japanese and white. And it kind of made me laugh because I was like, oh, this is, this is bad for them. But it was just like, man, it was almost like they, it was actually like the Doctor Strange thing where it was like, you know, it was a big controversy. And then they made the joke about it, although this was, wasn't meant to be funny. It was like the actual reveal, which is unfortunate, but it was like the Doctor Strange thing where they made the joke about having, you know, the old Asian guy. And I was like, well, they actually could have had it because it could have been that guy. So it was just really silly. It was like, that's going to be just ripped apart. And I don't know how that got off the ground. You know, I'm sure it was already said and done before it was even completely finished, but I was just like, oof, that sucks. And the worst thing about that is the fact that that is actually, like, non-canon stuff. Like, they created that for the film where it's the twist that she was actually this young girl, and they talk about her having family and stuff. And I was like, oh, man, that's, you know, an interesting twist, but unfortunately with the controversy stuff, it's going to get torn apart because of that twist. And um, personally speaking, that's also, like, even way outside the controversy, that was what really bugged me about the film because it was like, it went from, it was already just, you know, a decent action movie, it wasn't getting to the philosophical stuff, and I wasn't really waiting for the philosophical stuff, but then it never came because it was the big reveal, and I felt like they really could have gone into the philosophical stuff because of the reveal, but instead it just went by the numbers. And we got the cool thing where she goes to, you know, find her mother and stuff, um, because she's supposed to be killed and the doctor saves her. But then it switched from, like, we find out that the first villain actually is, you know, was just tortured and stuff. He's still technically a villain, but he was, you know, taken away and kidnapped. And he's, I guess he was the 97th attempt. <laughs> because we find out there were, like, 98 other people that were experimented on before uh, it worked on Kusanagi. So he was, like, the 97th person, and it failed. So... You know, that's like the epic reveal that he's not actually the bad person in this situation. He did some bad stuff, but it's to get rid of these horrible people who killed nearly a hundred children and just random homeless people just to make this experiment for the next step of human evolution. And then it goes to just the generic Mr. Cutter. Like, his name is super generic. It's Mr. Cutter. So he's like the CEO or whatever of um, Hanaka, uh, I believe, or Hanka or Hanka. Hanka. Well, I think it's like Hanka or Hanaka. Um, and it was just like, all right, well, he became the villain and it got super generic after that. And that kind of does happen in the first movie as well, where things kind of start to twist around. And, you know, because they blended some stories, it's like a lot of stuff is like in the first movie. And then some stuff is from like the series and things. So it's like some parts just blended together. 
uh, like Section 9 being targeted and stuff was from the series instead of the actual film. So they kind of blend the elements in, and it was kind of cool. Uh, some of the action sequences that they had in there, seeing uh, the, le the head of Section 9, which really bugged me, because um, I'm pretty sure that I counted when he was shooting, because he had a revolver, and I'm pretty sure he shot seven times. Actually, he shot eight times, because he definitely shot the dude at the end, and then he unloaded, and I was like, I'm pretty sure he already hit seven shots when he, by the time he finished getting out of the car, and then he shot an eighth time, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I counted that right, unless I somehow, even if I miscounted the seven shots, he definitely hit seven by the time he shot that dude on the ground because he didn't reload. He was in this car. He, because if I remember right, he pushes the door open. He shoots one time at the person that like came straight to the door. He shot that person once. Then he missed his first shot when he was holding up the briefcase. And then he shot two more times and he hit that person. So that's four. And then it was five, six, seven because he definitely shot three times at the second person. And then he shot the person that was on the ground. I'm pretty sure he shot eight times with a revolver and I was like count your bullets movies never do it and it makes me mad but he had a cool sequence uh the ending shot this is just a visual thing because I love good shots when he killed Cutter and they just had that shot of him super close and it was almost like a silhouette of him with the gun and it's just raining and you can kind of see like the outline the outlying edges of the pool I was like that's just a phenomenal shot and you can see because it's an open ceiling and stuff that looked great. That was just, it just stuck out as one of the best looking shots in the entire film. And also, uh, I believe it was when uh, Matoka was going and she actually like, found her mom. I think it was before she got there or it was when she left and they just have a vertical shot just pointing straight up. That looked amazing. And I remember seeing that in the trailer and I was like, that's just a beautiful shot. Like it looked so much like the original film. I was like, that's just a perfect shot. So those two, just wanted to mention that they were just the two shots, like just visually even though they're the simplest shots, all the CG stuff they had, it was just realistic stuff, the cool rain shot, <laughs> and then just the vertical uh, shot where they had just, it was just so blocked off perfectly. I was like, that just looks really, really good. But enjoyed the film. Uh, like I said, this is mostly to talk about the controversy stuff and how it kind of combines in there, but I really think that was the big issue, uh, was the twist, not really with the controversy stuff, but the big twist that they had, not only did it kind of like take down the film just from a personal standpoint of like oh you know this is what led to like the not so cool villain and you can have the cool reveal and that's kind of a big issue with the double villain thing unless it's in the series it tends to not work too well in films because just like in this movie it gets revealed and it's within like the last 40 minutes of the film so it's like oh we find out the main villain for this big chunk of the movie was actually tortured and he's trying to get retribution for not only himself but all the people he cared for and he lost that he can't even remember anymore. And it's like that's really compelling. And then unfortunately 40 minutes or and I feel like it, I'm sure it was much less but 40 minutes just isn't enough to have you know the secondary uh, villain come in especially when it's just the generic guy at the top. Like if they were both low-level people and there was just Maybe there's some corporate espionage going on on top of him being the main villain or the you know the second main villain. Maybe it could work, but it really got super generic where he's just the boss at the top of the company and they found out that he was the bad guy. You know, he was actually the bad guy. Section 9 had been you know, lied to the entire time. Uh, Kusanagi realizes that she used to know this guy and she finds her parent or at least her mother and stuff. I was like, okay, you know, some of that stuff was interesting, her finding her mom and things like that, especially with it being, like, totally brand new stuff that's never even been in the series, at least to my knowledge. So, it was like, some of that stuff was interesting, but then, you know, we have just the generic secondary villain, and he does, I mean, admittedly, he does kind of have a cool death because, of course, we have the epic fight sequence where it's ripped straight from the original film, and i got to say I love that. I wish they did one extra thing, which, of course, was she ripped both her arms instead of just one arm. Um, I don't know why they bothered doing that. It's like, it's not like anything happened after that either. Like, she rips the thing, and then all she does is, like, put her arm on Bato at the end where he's like, are you okay? And then she does that, and then it cuts to uh, the head of Section 9 when he, you know, finds Cutter. So I was like, why? Like, that was totally pointless. They easily could have just ripped, you know, ripped both arms off, and it would have been really cool. But I gotta be honest, I love that segment. The whole ending uh, section was really cool. You know, she's running from the thing, and, you know, he's just shooting at her, and she's shooting at it to, of course, no avail, but it was just really good, and then it gets to the end where he's about to, you know, kill Kuzo, and she gets down there, and I was like, and I was hoping, I was like, man, as soon as that thing showed up, I was like, I hope they do the arm rip thing, that was the one thing I was hoping for, even if the rest of the fight was like, man, 
It's like, as long as they do the arm rip, I'm good. And they have did it, so I, I still appreciate it. Um, especially the way they did it, because in the original one, she her arms just rip off. But in this, it was kind of like she got it at the last minute. And it was just the force of it swinging back that ripped her arm off. I actually kind of like that it was a little bit different in that regard. Because um, if I remember right, at least, she pulls it up like just at the last second, but both her arms pull off just as it pulls up. And that I thought was cool. It was like she got it, and just that little extra bit of inertia, she whips it back and just was like, I'm going to take this, and just took the arm off. And I was like, that's kind of that's a nice little change to it. But love the way they did it visually, and just the suit ripping open, and you can start to see inside. I was like, I'm super happy that they left that in there. It just, it just looked really good. I still just wish it was both. Um, but they did a good job with that, especially um, the muscle, like, continuously building until it was actually, like, tearing off. I like the fact that they did that because they could have made it simple where it just stretched and ripped off. But I was glad that they kind of almost, like, did it to a T, like the film did, where it was, like, she... It was basically like she was constantly building muscle as she was trying to rip it. And that's what forced the muscles to expand too much and basically just explode. So I thought it was good that we got to see that. But I still wish just a little extra bit. Just let both arms fly. That would have been really cool. But still a great uh, action set piece ending for that. And then like I said, you know, even though we have like my favorite shot in the whole film when he's standing in the rain. Killing Cutter was like nothing. It was slightly cool. It was like, you know, do I have your consent and stuff like that. Uh, which is another thing, and I was like, I kind of wish she said her actual name. I mean, they already went to the point where we know that she was, you know, Matogo Kuzanagi. And she's like, my name is Major, and I give my consent. And I was like, well, that was, that felt almost like against the whole point of her finding out who she truly was with the whole point of the film. Like, I'm alone, and I don't know my family, and this and that. And I thought she was going to say, my name is Major Matogo Kusanagi, and I thought she'd say, like, the whole thing. And she just stopped at Major, and I was like, well, that's dumb. Like, why did they have her say it that way? Like, why wouldn't she say her actual name if, you know, that was the point of the film was her, you know, the big reveal was her finding out where she actually came from and learning the truth that she wasn't some random person from a terrorist accident on a boat. So I was like, well, that I thought was a little bit dumb. Uh, but still, I, I did enjoy this film. And like I said, this was mostly to talk about just some of my favorite moments in it, um, like the action set pieces I thought were good. Um, I actually liked what they did with Bato, because I was curious, because um, I, like, I knew the character, but I'm like, all right, well, clearly in the trailer we see parts where he has, you know, basically the little dots, and then there's parts where he just has normal eyes. So I was like, okay, so are they going to do it where like, he just puts them on or something? Are they just going to be like little, you know, covers or what's going to happen here? And so when we got the explosion where he actually has damage because there's like shrapnel in his eyes, I was like, that's actually a cool way to do that because in the movie, as well as the series, that's just how it is. He just chose to have that. And I was like, that actually kind of adds, I just saw there's a spider walking right up the wall. Um, <laughs> but I was like, that actually kind of adds to him having that. I just thought it was a cool thing because like they kind of have him, uh, they have uh, Kuzanagi repeat the line at the end, like say something nice. I was like, that's kind of cool that they made that little extra bit of drama uh, where the explosion hit him and like he's holding his eyes because he basically went blind so they had to give him augmented eyes and I was like that's actually kind of a cool way to do that so I like that little addition um, I mentioned this in my spoiler free review but I really wish we got to see more of section 9 we see all the characters there but we just don't really get to see them do much uh, we don't get we don't get a single hacking uh, segment I don't remember the characters names or anything but we don't get a single hacking segment we get our sniper shot at the end I don't I feel like he didn't even show up in the rest of the movie until that sniper moment and I was like I don't even remember seeing him in the background he was probably there um, during like there's like a helicopter sequence which may have actually been after him doing the sniper rifle thing but there was a part where a lot of them went together and I was like he wasn't I don't remember seeing him in the beginning of the movie where they did like the briefing and stuff in the room where the red um, you know, thing came up, so I was like, I don't remember seeing him at all in this movie, but we do get to see the characters, and if this film happens to get a sequel, which personally I don't think it will, just because of um, the fact that it's not doing too well in the box office, and probably the controversy will just, you know, jump on top of that and make it an even worse, uh, even less chance that it'll get a sequel, but I would love to see more of those characters. My main issue is that we didn't get to see more of the human character, and that of course, coincides with the philosophical thing because I felt he was the greatest um, segue into what does it mean to be human because he was the guy who stayed human 100%. No augmentations, none of that stuff. Um, him being injured in the original movie. I was talking about this in my spoiler-free thing 
I think I remember it a little better now. He was actually injured, and they were like, you can go back to work, like, in an hour or two if you just let us give you, like, a new body part or something. He was like, no, I'll just heal. And if I remember it, that's why he wasn't in, like, the rest of the movie, because he got shot, like, in the stomach or something, and it was a serious injury, and he was like, no, just let me heal like a normal human. And just all that stuff where it's like, man, missed out, missed opportunity. So that was unfortunate, but I did enjoy this film. Um... Just, man, it really sucks the controversy surrounding this. And it is an issue, the fact that it happened in general, because I do personally feel they could have just got an Asian-American actress. Admittedly, once something like this happens, unless I was, like, on the fence of seeing something, it's not going to affect me. Because, honestly, like, it already happened. So, for me personally, I was like, I just want to see Ghost in the Shell. So, that's my weird trying not to get super upset about it. I already got enough real-world stuff to, that I already hate it. So, I don't need to just add this specific version of something I do like to hate. I don't, I don't need that, personally. But would love to know what you guys thought about the film. I'd even love to know what you guys thought about the controversy of this, like where you stand on it. A big deal, not a big deal. Are you kind of in the middle with me where it's... I don't think it's not a big deal. I personally think it is a big deal. It's just, you know, society, that's how it is. It sucks. But, you know, for me, it was like I wasn't going to like boycott the movie just because... For me personally, I still needed to see this. I needed to see what was going to happen with it. And it's actually a pretty decent film. They do some stuff, like I said, the big twist where it turns out she was an Asian person who ended up in a white body. Doesn't help the controversy case, but um, outside of that, I just really enjoyed it. It just didn't get the, you know, philosophical impact that I was looking for. But other than that, good action movie, for sure. Love the visuals. I just... I mean, aside from the shots, just the opening uh, segment, which is taken straight from the first episode of uh, San Juan Complex, phenomenal. Just, I loved everything about that, and the way the robots look, the geisha bots, absolutely amazing. But, like I said, want to know what you guys thought about this film, as well as its controversy, if you want to talk about that. So please, comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.